Hi guys, I'm Mike, and we are on our way out to deal with, uh, well, I guess what would be considered a medical emergency here on the ranch. Uh, we've got a steer that I noticed when I went out and fed that didn't come up and eat. Uh, he didn't get up, he didn't come over to, to see what was going on, he didn't act like he was uh, willing to come and eat at all. So when I got a chance to go over and take a look at him, this is what I found. And this is what is considered an anal prolapse. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna head out there to him now and try to get him fixed up a little bit. Um, I've got a vet on the way to uh, do what they need to do and hopefully everything works out here okay for him. Right now, what we're going out to do is we're actually gonna put uh, some Vaseline on the prolapse itself to keep it moist. Uh, so when it's time to push it back in, uh, everything will be uh, okay with him. So we're gonna head that way and, uh, and get him fixed up. Uh, this cow does not wanna get up this steer. Um, he is one of the steers that normally we would have taken uh, to market here last week, uh, but we kept him back and he is gonna be eventually sold in the farm store. So this is him, his back legs have actually kind of stopped working. Um, he doesn't really wanna move. You can see that he's kind of flopping around there. And that's cause he's probably been down most of the evening um, with uh, not been able to move. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually take this Vaseline and we're gonna smear it on this rectal tissue. This is a rectal prolapse. Um, we're gonna put it on this tissue in order to keep this tissue moist because what the vet's gonna do when they get here is actually push all this back in and uh, it's a little disgusting. So what I'm doing is just putting Vaseline as much as I can all over what we've got exposed to the elements. It's about um, 23 degrees out here right now. So it's definitely cold enough to freeze any tissue that is outside the body. So we want to make sure that we're able to keep this moist enough until the vet's able to get here and start uh, start the process of getting this stuff back in and cleaned up and then probably stitched back in place but I'm not exactly sure how they're gonna do this one we don't run into this too often it's actually uh, pretty rare to see this happen um, but like I said my guess would be that he's probably impacted um, and not able to pass uh, manure and cannot and ended up pushing too hard, um, which then caused this whole problem. So we're gonna just smear this all over the place. And hopefully get it covered up enough. And what we're looking at is actually a portion of his intestine that has turned inside out and pushed its way out. problem with the temperature is that the Vaseline obviously is uh, is congealing in the cold temperature out here so that's probably gonna be about as good as I'm gonna be able to get it the temperature out here is just not really helping at all with the Vaseline and it's causing that uh, it to congeal so we do have a uh, spectator section here watching what we're doing too. All these boys obviously worried about their friend. So we've got the vet on the way out. Um, once the vet gets here, uh, we'll be in the process of getting this all pushed back here and we're just waiting for the vet at this point. So it's one of those hurry up and wait type situations, which are always super fun. Good thing I was in the military. They taught you how to deal with this stuff. Who are you back? Alrighty, we're back up and running. The vet just got here, and uh, they are gonna follow me uh, down into this pasture really quick to uh, see what we can do with this calf. Luckily, 
he's not that far away. And we're hoping that the Vaseline that we put on there actually had uh, uh, helped a little bit. But I think we're okay. Hopefully we can get it put back in, stitched back up, and, and be good to go. So we're just going to run down the road here really quick. He's actually sitting right over here to our right. So all we have to do is just pull off over here and find him. Hopefully Doc doesn't have any problem with us filming, and uh, we will take a look see what we got going on. Here's all his brothers over here hanging out. And there he is. Here's what we've got. Uh, so the vet is gone. We actually managed to give him some fluids and uh, they stitched up his prolapse uh, and got everything pushed back inside and uh, taken care of. We also managed to move him from the field here into the sales barn where he will stay and hopefully uh, get to feeling better. One of the causes of this is called coccidiosis and that's something we're gonna treat the rest of those uh, steers for. On the other side of the road, it's a super simple treatment. It's just an additive to their water and uh, shouldn't be a problem at all. So that pretty much wraps it up for this guy. He's gonna get to rest here in the sales barn and we'll get some heat on him, close the door, and uh, hopefully we can get him feeling a little bit better, get him some water and some food, and, and uh, hopefully he can snap out of this. Okay, we're gonna let him rest over in the sales barn. Uh, hopefully he gets to feeling better. Uh, the vet did give us about a 20% chance uh, that he would make it. So, um, you know, chances are that he may not, but hopefully uh, with some water and some food uh, and get some hydration into him, some food into him, and then he's gonna be able to get up and, and move around. Whether or not he has coccidiosis is, is debatable. There is no blood in his stool, which is, a, which is a very good indication of the parasite that invades the intestine of pretty much any animal and can actually bring them down very, very fast. Uh, he doesn't have any blood in his stool, nor does any of the other steers that we have across the road. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna treat all of them like they have coccidiosis, just as a preventative treatment. Uh, we're gonna do that, and uh, hopefully uh, that will nip anything in the butt that might be happening. We don't know for sure, and without a actual uh, smear or something to look underneath the microscope of his feces, we will never know. But um, they did give him some banamine. Uh, they gave him a shot of steroids, and hopefully all that is gonna, is gonna bring him out of this. What may save us is this. This is Corid. It's an oral solution uh, for coccidiosis. And it's actually, we, you, can, uh, you can actually uh, just give this to them in their water. Uh, there's, a, there's a formula right here on the back. Um, we're looking at a treatment protocol. So a daily dosage is 10 milligrams uh, per 2.2 pounds of body weight. Uh, we usually do that over five days. So it's gonna take about half of this uh, mixed in with the calves water uh, in order for them to to, uh, to get rid of any of the parasite that they may have uh, within their systems, just in case. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring them into a corral in order to make that happen. Corrals are one thing you can never have enough of on a ranch. It always seems like if you think you have enough, you're about too short. But luckily we have an empty corral that has water available for these steers. These steers we kept back from the calves that we sold over the, uh, over the, over the break here on the last video. And these guys will uh, be sold at the farm store uh, once they get big enough to butcher. They will be butchered next year, uh, I do believe. And uh, we already have those dates scheduled for them. Once they're old enough and big enough, they will go directly from the ranch to the end consumer, whether that's in the form of a T-bone hamburger or a half or a whole. This gate has been my nemesis for years. Uh, it's a big old rolling gate that was probably installed back in, oh, who knows when. 
but uh, and this whole fence obviously needs some work but um, I do want to kind of take this down this summer and redo a lot of this fence over here especially now that we're using it a lot more than we ever have in the past uh, a lot of times this this whole area over here really doesn't get used a whole lot so all right we're gonna open that up hopefully far enough to be able to get the gator in it's kind of my thought let's pull in here hopefully these steers will follow us and i've got a bale set up in here for them already to get in on That must be a really good bail. All right, we got a few stragglers coming up towards the end here. Steers are all locked in, preoccupied by the feed. We're gonna go ahead and close this gate again. There we go, okay. Now, we're gonna go back on the other side and uh, deal with their water. Calves are in, steers are in, I guess I should say. They're no longer calves, we're gonna call them steers from now on. They are in, and now it is time for us to uh, to do their treatment, their little corid treatment, which will treat the uh, coccidiosis uh, parasite that they could be infected with, we're not exactly sure. A couple interesting things is this is actually a shared uh, water source. It's shared between the steers over here, let me show you that we're actually in the process of finishing. We have the two horses here that, uh, remember I talked about not having enough corrals? This is what happens. We've got steers over there that are just about ready to go. They're gonna go to market in, uh, well, they're gonna go to butcher in February. They'll come right back to market here at the farm store. The horses are here, of course. They're in there with those guys right now. We have a shared water trough, and then of course we have our steers over here, uh, which are gonna now get their treatment for coccidiosis. So, the other thing that I wanted to tell you, about coccid coccidiosis is that you may have heard it, uh, it actually has another term, and some people call it bloody scours. Uh, it's the same thing, same difference. It can bring down a calf really fast as we've seen with the uh, the calf that's still over there in the sales barn that we're gonna go check on here in a little bit. So um, this is the easiest part of this whole deal. We've got the calves in, they only have one place to drink. We have our corid. We know that we need to use about two thirds of this gallon uh, to treat all these guys for a five day treatment. So all I have to do is add it into the water. The horses will get it, the steers over here will get it, but nice thing is that it's actually, it can go pretty much for any type of animal. So the other thing that we gotta talk about is withdrawal period. And what, what the withdrawal period is, is because we do have steers over here that are gonna be butchered before too long, is that anytime you give any type of vaccination, any type of antibiotic, anything to these animals, most of those things do have a withdrawal period. That withdrawal period, all it means is that you cannot butcher an animal within that time, time frame. If you're using antibiotics, usually it's about 28 days, 21 to 28 days, depending on the antibiotic. Um, with this corid, it's actually only 24 hours, which is really good. The, the uh, withdrawal period is actually there to protect the consumer. It's regulated, it's been tested. Uh, it doesn't matter what kind of medication, vaccine, pour on, whatever you may give to cattle, horses, uh, anything like that, it's gonna usually have a withdrawal period. And uh, that's there to protect the consumer. And it's not only with meat animals. Erin will tell you all about it in the garden that she has to deal with withdrawals, with withdrawal periods as well. That's right. Even in the gardens, I have to deal with withdrawal periods and I always make sure to read the label and find out after I apply an herbicide or a pesticide how long the window is until it's safe for human consumption. So always check your labels, make sure your food is safe before you eat it. Thanks, Aaron. Withdrawal periods really do apply across the spectrum. So we're going to get right to it. Uh, this will go into their water. Very simple, and just kind of mix it around a little bit. Like I said, I want to go for about two thirds. Uh, somewhere in here, it's really not an exact science for me, but uh, we just add it directly into their water. There we go. That's all there is to it. Keeping calves healthy, steers healthy, 
horse is healthy, whatever the animal may be, coccidiosis can really bring down an animal really fast. Well guys, I really hate to say it, but this guy, um, he didn't make it. Unfortunately, whatever he had wrong with him, whatever it may be, may have saved the rest of the calves' lives, though. Because through the, the treatment of the coccidiosis, it may nip that in the butt. If that's what took him out, we wanna make sure that we don't lose the entire herd because of it. Luckily, it's only the few calves and steers that are on the other side of the road that could be exposed to it. On the other side of the road, we have our breeding herd, uh, which is being kept separate at this point. But if we do see any signs there, we'll do the same thing. We'll treat them with Corid as well and hopefully be able to nip this whole thing in the butt. It's one of those things that you never know what's causing what, but keeping your eyes open and looking out for things that don't look normal, whether it's just a calf that's laying in the field that doesn't come up to eat or, or another cow that is off by herself. You never know, and it's always worth that extra couple seconds to go and check. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I do appreciate it. We have a lot more coming up here on Our Wyoming Life as we continue on into the spring. Coming up this week, we're gonna take you on a tour of the ranch. This is coming up on Friday, and you can look at all the animals, and I'm gonna introduce you to most of everything that we have around here, from the heifers that we kept back to the steers that are across the road, the horses, the, the uh, steers that we're finishing, the cows, the pigs, peacocks, chickens, oh my gosh, there, there's everything, cats, everything, everywhere, dogs. Uh, we're gonna make our way around the ranch and we're gonna meet every single animal that we can. If you are in the market for some beef jerky, some Our Wyoming Life merchandise, be sure to go to our website, ourwyomingwife.com. Right now, you can save up to 30% on selected items on our website. Everything is at least 15% off. There is some stuff that's up to 30% off. So go check that out, ourwyomingwife.com. In the meantime, hit subscribe, follow Follow along as we continue to explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Until I see you again, have a great week, and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life.